I had the privilege recently of spending a bit of time with small talker John Brandt, who's, I would say, famous in the community for his work on the refactoring browser and the Smack small talk compiler compiler. Um, we looked at how you would use Smack in GToolkit to translate a reasonably sized and featured parser from Antler Grammar through to being usable in GToolkit. Uh, I was able to fire a lot of questions at him that have come up on the Discord from myself and others repeatedly, so hopefully it becomes a resource for the community to leverage the huge base of existing Antler parsers and make everyone more familiar and comfortable with Smack, which has become an integral part of GToolkit. So I hope you enjoy. Without further ado, here's John. And so I, I think you kind of helped me through this approach um, originally to get yes. this far. Yeah. Um, so I did this with a, um, I followed this with the um, Tamil um, grammar, which is, um, what the pip pip file format is it's it's a pretty manageable grammar um, uh -huh. and but it left me with a lot of to do's yeah and that's kind of where i fell down and i also suspected that the way i was going about um editing the parser was not the way that you guys on the team yeah, yeah. It because i was running into a lot of um a lot of kind of unfinished corners in the ui so like I was editing the, I believe I was editing the source tab, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Grammar tab wasn't updating, you know, so I. I yeah, so, so I do know that that is one thing right now that the grammar and the source tab are not linked together. So yeah, that that is a an issue. So normally what I do is I, you know, convert the grammar, load it into the source page, compile it, then don't use the source page anymore. I go over and start uh, using the grammar. Okay. All right. So let me let me see. I think I have a link to to the Tamil grammar, and then maybe I'll turn the uh, I'll turn it over to you. Um, I mean, we can just you know you know get as far as we can. But um, okay. And yeah, some of these you know, depending on the grammar, it might be easy. It might be hard. I don't know. Some of them are you know more more complex than others. Yeah. I don't know either. I picked this one only because the, the two use cases that I had were this and HTML. So I figured that yeah. <laughs> this is probably going to be much easier than HTML. All right. So this is going to be the Tamil antler grammar. It's like kind of, you know, kind of a one pager. Yeah. And I guess I think that I, you know, I did, I think you would give me a few tips um, that I collected from other times and also i read a little bit of the docs and i think one of the things has something to do with the um the greedy non-greedy operator yeah, the yeah question mark that antler has yeah. yeah let's see i'm not you know just a quick scan of the grammar i'm not seeing anything that should be too difficult i don't think but you never know until you <laughs> get into it i think so sure sure shall we give it a try yeah I search for that page. And I forgot what I just named the file. So it's going to be dot something, I think. <laughs> I'll do it this way. Oops. And it looks like Tom old it. So, okay, everything's good so far. We have this here. And let's just see what this produces. So, that ran out there, so that's the first step. <laughs> <laughs> and I know. I'll just mention, I, I do remember one, it is kind of a bit tangential, but it was very hard to, to use the tools to test the rules because in general, um, Tamil doesn't accept carriage return as a new line. 
And because yeah. inside the image, you know, when you're using the tools, it's just CRs. Yes. It yeah. wouldn't, it, everything was failing. So I wasn't sure if there's a good best practice for that. I, I first thought so, maybe I'll just extend the grammar to accept CR just so I can test it. And then like, yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. So in those cases, I think if you paste in an LF, it still pastes the LF into GT. Okay. So, you know, if you have it off externally into, you know, an editor, external editor and paste it in there, I think it, that works. Okay. So what I, what I might do in real life then to like, for examples, is I would have like a parameterized example that takes the string and converts it to LFs. And then I could call that in my, I could send that in my. Yeah. Own. Yeah. Okay. So let's create a coder, add a new package. Then add a new parser. And generally, I just come over here and paste in that okay. into the source. And OK, so here's the first one in which my converter doesn't handle the blocks the same way that um, um, Antler does. And that um, if you have the minus sign, I think an Antler probably being the first or the last character, then it's an actual character and not a range. So I just need to put that in uh, backslash in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, there might be a few places like that, if I recall. So I think that's probably, let's see. see. Nope. I had another one in here someplace. Okay. Yeah. I that I didn't press the, I'll just hit that and go to here. And then below that, there's the infinan, almost where you're. Oh, yep. Oops. And then desint on the left there. Uh, oh, here. Yeah. Oh. I was thinking the, the cur text cursor, not the mouse cursor. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I was looking at the text cursor and I'm going, <laughs> I, I don't see where that is. Let's see what. The... Okay, I think that. So if I click over here, yep, it's done something. Okay. And that was one other, you know, small nit was that once you get that error message and then you save the source again, it doesn't clear the message. Or if there's another. And I, I think I have fixed that part. So, oh, cool. Right. Just so a little, I, I mean, once, you, once you're used to it, yeah. you know to check, yeah. but, but yeah. Before, yeah, I was just confused as to what was going on. And actually, a little bit later, so we can uh, actually fix that slash one. I can show you a, a different tool that I use to do that, okay. which basically is a way different a UI onto this here. But, so we have this, and do you have like some string to, to test? Yeah, hold on. There's uh, let me grab on there GitHub. So here we have this here, which looks like it's probably a new line character that's not being found, right? So uh, the way I, I you know, I kind of know just from dealing with Antler is that a lot of times just I just have to look for the new line stuff. And so I kind of just search for to do because that's what it stuck in there. So let's see. And it's just essentially what the converter did. So I know WS is a white space and essentially an antler. I think they pass it to what is it called? A, a channel, I believe. And they say, oh, this thing goes to skip or something like that, which just um, ignores that value. Okay. In SMAC, we do um, basically methods you can write on the scanner. So if, uh, if a name of a scanner token is the same as a method on that scanner, it basically calls that, that method. Mm -hmm. And we have a method already called white space that essentially ignores that value. Ah, I knew to do that, but I wasn't clear why it worked. So um, thank you for that. Yeah. So if, if you look here, it's got the little arrow here. Mm -hmm. Here's the, the implementation of that. 
I gotcha. Cool. Which basically says reset everything and start over scanning again. Mm -hmm. So I can get rid of this here. Now, this here is one of these non greedy matches. And let's see. So I'm not quite sure. Escape character or that's not a one of those things. Followed by a quote. I don't think they need a non greedy match there. Um, so I think I'll just remove this for now. You know, it's one of these that a lot of these little things. Um, Depending on what it is, there might be a reg regular expression that does it differently. Um, some things you can't do with regular expressions because I've seen, you know, where they have like the nested comments. So you can't have a regular expression that does kind of stack based things. Another thing that, um, not to go on a tangent, but I was wondering what I wanted to do to simplify, because if you look at this, there's a lot of places where they say not a line feed but then they have a definition of a new line somewhere. And, but then instead of using it, it's repeated everywhere, like not new line, not new line, not new line. I was wondering, is there any way in Smack to say not and then- Yeah, you can't, you can't put not and a token. Okay, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's one of the things if you're, if uh, I think you can do that antler, because uh, I have seen some grammars where it looked like, you know, they did not and some other token or and, you know, some lexical thing. And, you know, I, I'm not for sure. And right now, I I don't think those actually even generate from the that conversion script that we ran. So I think you get an error if you tried to run one of those. Okay. So I I'm just going to remove that one too. Literal string is uh, yeah. I don't know why you know it does this non-greedy one, but uh, maybe I'm missing something. Now this one here is a non-greedy one. You know, it probably needs to be a non-greedy, mm -hmm. and essentially I handle these and. A few different ways. One is you could actually write the regular expression that you know looks for this, in which I've probably got enough grammars where I could probably find this someplace where I wouldn't have to you know invent the wheel because regular expressions are hard. Mm -hmm. um, the other way is to you know, as I said, basically any token name that's also a name of a method in the scanner mm -hmm. gets called. So you know. You could do something like, you know, name this the name of a method, uh, just match the first three of these, then in your scanner, basically say, oh, up to three end quotes. And, you know, create a token from that. So you would, you would actually like, um, consume, like use small talk code to consume what you wanted and. Yeah, because, you, like you know, it's easier to do than, you know, figuring out the regular expression. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I think if I remember right, is this a Python or Ruby that might have had something that's similar? So let me just, after so many grammars, they... <laughs> I'm sure they blend together. Yeah. And I don't, let's see, oh, there maybe. Uh, I'm guessing something about like this one here. Well, it's like it's like that brain F language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hieroglyphic. Because essentially, it's uh, let's say you know the three quotes. Then any you can have this or that or this here as any characters. Mm -hmm. 
you know, any list of those followed by three quotes. And the first one is, oh, it's anything that's, oh, I guess the, I don't need the backslash because it's, uh, so it's anything, it's not a quote, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then the next one is, you know, oh, you have a, one quote. So you have one quote in the middle of the line and followed by anything that's not a quote. <laughs> okay, okay. Or the next one is you have two quotes followed by anything that's not a quote. Okay, uh, it, yeah, okay. Yeah. When, you, so, when you speak like that, it actually makes sense. Yeah, but sometimes the simple reasoning like that um, is also wrong. So <laughs> I, I don't know if that's... <laughs> Uh, I'll have, and it's one of those things I have to stop and think about a while to, to, to know if that's correct or not. So, so let's say this. I still think we'll have our new line problem over here. So the first one now. Okay, that actually parses. Wow. Wow. Okay. I I feel slightly dumb. <laughs> I couldn't get to this point because it didn't seem like you did anything. I get oh the the, the string that okay, so I wouldn't have figured that out. That's okay. So yeah. I, feel, I feel less dumb now. Yeah. So now you know. Of course, now the the trick is to like if you want an AST to annotate this right, okay, and to produce the AST. And there I have basically these first two tabs in which these two are linked. So if you make changes in one of these, it'll change in the other. Okay. And so what I normally do is I'll go through and for like all the tokens. All right, okay. I'll give them names. And so you can see if each token, there's a little input field where you can specify a name. Mm -hmm. And for like, for these here, um, you can either do it like in a batch or a, you know, one by one. So like for this comma, what I'd normally do is I'll toggle it to do it in the batch. And I do like a command T or control T, depending on your, you know, your machine. Sure. And then you can see it's highlighted all of them. Yep. So then I can do comma. Oh, oh cool. And, you know, that way there I can kind of quickly annotate the, so yeah that little toggle thing it, it will do it also like so, say if we go back to here where i can toggle it back off and if i name this one like comma one now there's two two match or two types of toggles one will do oh rename all of them with the same name so if you toggle once it does that and leaves this one because it's a different name toggle two times it goes to all of them toggle a third time it's just that one so so all the same shortcut, you just cycle through those multiple options. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and generally, would you start with all the same name until you have a reason to name them differently? Or? Um, it, it just depends. Uh, so like, you know, left parentheses, parentheses on a, you know, an expression, you might want to name it differently on a left parentheses on a function call, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll just look, but you know, like here, I, you know, left bracket, uh, here it's key equal value. So, you know, you might, you know, equals or, but you know, then other places you might use equal as a comparison, you know, assignment or a comparison, you know, those type of languages where you. Oh, I see, okay. You know. it's, so it's, it's, it's a question of kind of, are they, do they mean different things in the domain? Yeah, just yeah. Just two different um, options for the parsing, like the. Yeah. You know, Okay. Because it, it all comes down to what you want your AST to kind of look like. So, and do you need, I mean, if, if do you always need, like for me, I wanted to parse the, parse the Tomal just so I can um, programmatically combine pip files. Um, do you necessarily always have to give names to like the comma and the dot? Like it, it, it seems like I would probably, if I was doing it. So, myself, so there is an it. option in which I don't know that I've added it here. Let's say there's an option. Because uh, there's an option that basically says for your tokens automatically generate something, you know, and mm -hmm. it kind of picks a name based off of what the thing is. So for the, the tokens that are, you know, have a name like this, it will use that as the, the name of the variable that's mm -hmm. going to add. 
or the ones where it's a uh, um, in here where we we just have a quotes quoted string mm -hmm. then it will try to do you know is that a, a period yeah yeah so it, it would do you know oh say oh a dot's a period or you know and then if you had multiple ones it would do it that way i think so there is an option let me see if i can find that but normally i i just name them myself because it's uh you know it isn't that big and and the thing is if if you do not use it for anything you, you don't have to have it there okay i'm just trying to wrap my head around it is it productions generally become nodes and tokens become variables is that so production can be yeah token is always going to be you know stored as a variable or order collection of you know in an order collection so like this one over here with uh commas mm -hmm. it will figure out that you actually need it's it will actually need you know a, an ordered collection of tokens okay. and it will you know change the name into commas because if you look here you know oh you only see one here but most likely this one here this array values comment or new line will not return a node you probably want it to return a list of whatever these things are let's see uh, and so you know this production of array values will probably want to return a collection of nodes not a node you know the difference between a, a parse tree versus an abstract syntax tree right where the parse tree is the whole detail of you know array value then it goes to another array value which goes to another array value you know we can produce that but most of the time you don't want that for your ast you want something simpler and so um the way it, it will actually figure out and say oh that that's a you know a compound thing we'll have where we'll have multiple uh to to comma tokens and convert that into commas as a the, the variable that's inserted into what a ast node that this one gets put, put into okay and if you do if you name some of them but not others it will return the other things as as just simple so um, whenever you go to producing the, um, oops, there we go. So whenever you start producing the nodes, you know, there you have to put in like your, you know, your curly brackets, the two mm -hmm. curly brackets, and you can type in a name. Mm -hmm. If you don't type in a name, it will use the name of the, the production. So this will create a document node. Mm -hmm. Then you probably want to say, oh, this is like, you know, you can either type it in, you know, the, the naming of the variables over on the annotation page, or you can type it in here too. Okay. It's just that, you know, sometimes it's easier to do on the annotation page because you can do a bunch of them at the same time. Sure. And like for this one here, you might say, well, I'm interested in the two expressions. So you name both of those, but not interested in this new line. You know, it's nothing to care about. So you don't even name that one. Okay. And so that would create a document node with an expressions, you know, variable, which is has an ordered collection of whatever expression re returned. Oh, I see. So it's it's more semantic than um, just the kind of the simple, uh, like the parser is more just like it doesn't know anything about the domain. This is going to try and give you back exactly what you are looking for. Yeah, because we try to make it so that yeah, it gives you more of an yeah your AST version of things and not the the parse tree version if i do the parse tree if i go over here and do this test here and i think this should work if i copy that same string that we had over there paste it here you can see here is the actual parse tree of that mm -hmm. which you know it's <laughs> You know, it gets pretty deep looking at that. So you probably, you know, all these new line expression things just want to collapse into, you know, here's one, here's the next one. So that's kind of the difference between the AST and a, a parse tree. So the what we're looking at on the bottom there is the parse tree. Yeah. And how would is there a way in the in kind of the uh, inspector tools to look at the the AST instead? 
the AST you have to define by defining these nodes. Oh, got okay. Yeah, because right. it, it doesn't know what you want for the AST until you, you know. AST is more under your control, whereas the you know the parse tree is more under the grammar's control. So you might have to do stuff in the parse tree to get it to you know parse correctly how you want it. You know by adding extra uh, productions in there that you know the only reason why that production exists is so that the you know you can use the parser generator to generate something that, that will work and if if we did define if we did name some of the nodes would that be available on the right there or would that would there is there somewhere else? uh not not in this uh tool here not from this uh the simulation and stuff okay it's, yeah the simulation just reads this and builds it as what what you see here Okay. Now, um, once we hit, you know, have the nodes here, then we could go over to the test tab. The test tab actually runs the parser as it's compiled, and that will then use the the nodes. Because okay. the nodes won't exist until we, you know, annotate things and then compile. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. One other thing that we didn't run into here, and I just wonder if there is an example in the image that we might just be able to take a glance at is um, when you have to get into scopes. Okay. Um, there, let's see, what do I have? Um, there aren't used that often. Let's see, I'm trying to think where I've actually used it. Um, That's already good information actually, because I mean, you guys have yeah. a few parsers now. So if you haven't, I haven't run into it. So yet. one of the places we have done it is in the, the JavaScript parser. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the JavaScript parser has the ability also, it's it's the same grammar that we use for the JSX and the TypeScript. Mm -hmm. It has all that built into the JavaScript, but it uses scopes to kind of limit where, you know, that occurs. So like the JSX has the, the templates uh, you know, the angle bracket, whatever stuff. And so we can switch to the scope that will parse the angle bracket. And let's see, where is this? Yeah, the JSX and text and the JSX. Stuff. So I type in search for Yeah, uh, let's see. And the basic uh, trick there is that for the scope, you have to know that essentially this this parser is uh, one token look ahead. It's an L, you know, L A L R one token look ahead. So when it makes a decision, it's actually looking at the next token. So the way the I have to do the scopes is to say. Okay, switch to the other scope that you want to. Okay. You do that before you see the the token that you're, you know, <laughs> your your next token. So that's that's the biggest thing with the scope is that you put in your, you know, here's the less than starts it off. Mm -hmm. But you really don't you switch, you have the switch before that token that starts it off. So the switch, you know, actually does the, oh, it says, you know, switch to scope JSX. And, you know, but it's already has that less than token. So it'll do the switch, it'll process that, then the JSS, uh, JSX scanner, you know, scope will take over and then scan whatever it needs for this uh, here, which is probably the, this identifier, looks like. So you're, you're, when you switch over to JSX, it basically tries to parse the thing as JSX. And if it's not JSX, then it fails and goes back. Um, actually, for the scopes, that just affects the scanner. So it's just scanning, you know, basically the next token it receives will be whatever can, can be scanned using the JSX part of the, the, the scanner. So, you know, it, we won't try to parse it as JavaScript identifier. It'll be a JSX identifier or um, whatever these other ones are. 
Let's see. Yeah, it looks like everything starts with the JSX here. And how does it how does it know that those that those are JSX things? Um, basically, here we just have the, the the token here. So this token is marked oh, as it is an annotate. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to think of a simple example like a of of of, uh, of uh, like a test code that would run into this that this would be exercised? Um, it's a bit abstract. I'm not too familiar with yeah. JSX, so it's hard for me to visualize. Here, here, essentially, the difference between you know basically a JavaScript name and a JSX name is this minus. Mm -hmm. So you can have a minus, and you know, so you can do the I don't know. Um, I don't. Let's see if I can even remember what uh, it looks like. <laughs> It's all these, these grammars I don't really remember. You know, I just build it and throw right. some tool and never programmed in it or anything else. So let's see. Is JSX a superset of, of JavaScript? So it's everything JavaScript plus extra? I think, let's okay. see. Let's see. something like that. Okay, yep. <laughs> so essentially there, it starts out here, it goes into, you know, that let's, let's see if I can do this here, maybe. So there we're you know, in the debugger, we started there. I stepped it to to get to where I can display this Mac parser. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, it's ready to go from here. Okay. And so if I do the next token, you see we got a less than, you know, it's searching for that, in which I kind of override the tokens too, just so there's a less than, there's, you know, basically a few different types of less than tokens mm -hmm. that it will, it'll match. But if I then do, I think, uh, into reduction, let's see. So first one's starting that one. So let's see if I do this again. I don't know if this is gonna work, let's see. We're still looking at that. We've reduced a starting statement because you know we're parsing a, a JavaScript program, so it has multiple statements or whatever. So um, into reduction. There we go. Switch to JSX. <laughs> so through action. So we've done the switch to JSX and now uh, JSS less than, this is kind of handled behind the scenes, but I know that less than and this less than are actually the same, okay. this token and that token. So if I just do next token, let's see, let's see, that work? Oh, uh, oh there's probably, uh, probably a bit of, yeah, there's, it parses it both ways. So you look down here and there's two of two. So I don't know if this will work fine or good enough for this or not let's see okay now it figured out the other one was an error and uh, so okay. now if, was, if, <laughs> because javascript can't contain the dash it knows it's JSX. yeah yeah so now we have set up now we've got a identifier jsx identifier which has the minus in there and so then we can see oh we've got the you know, the ending slash and and let's say it's probably a reduce as switch back to default. So that's what this greater than is going to do. It's going to switch to, to, to default. Okay. And what, when you change the scope to the JSX in the parser, it was it was like a bracket, and then it said yeah something, and then it said nil. What was the nil about? So essentially, that there they go. Let's see, where was it? Uh, so here. So there's two things. One is that I use the square brackets, 
So the square brackets and GLR, essentially, you know, it basically will try all all possible parses essentially, mm -hmm. and it does not run the code um, to that gets you know the code that, for the reduction until it figures out which which one is the right one to run. So, however, there's cases where you do want the code to run immediately. And so by having a square brackets that tells Smack to run this code immediately, if I would have this as uh, curly brackets, like, oops. Then that code would be run once that we figure out that this is the only possible interpretation of, of that. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That way there we don't pick, you know, uh, a thousand parse trees when we, you know, only want one, you know, <laughs> we, we just build the one that we know that we need once we finish parsing everything. Mm -hmm. And what does the nil mean? So the nil, uh, Smack will also say, it will give you warnings, although they do not appear in GToolkit, you have to go over to the Faro version and compile it with, you know, in the morphic to get the warning messages. Mm -hmm. It will tell you if you forgot to label something. So, it, you know, um, it would tell me if that nil wasn't there that, oh, I I did not name this thing. So it would be thrown out of the grammar. And in order to get rid of the warning, I can put nil there and Smack will see, oh, this thing returns nil. So there's no need to stick it in your AST. Gotcha. Because it's whatever like that, that you didn't forget, yeah, whatever that returns, that's the value of this this production. Huh. All right, that makes sense. So, do you have other questions or? No, I, I, I think that was pretty much it. And I, you know, I, I wanted to maybe, I wanted to recreate what you did with the Tommel. And then if that worked, I was going to maybe give HTML a crack. And I suspected that I may have to utilize the scope. So I just wanted to get an idea of how that worked. Yeah. Let's see, there's this other little tool that I might, let's see. That, uh, let's see. Oh. Run this and share this other window. So I have this this here, which this is kind of what I use to build the, the transformations for Antler. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is this is essentially what the tool I use to do large scale conversions. So we've done, you know. Delphi to C sharp or whatever, and Java conversions, whatever conversions. So I've done a bunch of them, but this is kind of the tool I use. And so I can set this up to run the smack or the antler ones by. So I just go here, select the, the parser that I want. The validation parser is essentially the output parser. And I know that. <clears throat> If I wanted to save it to files, I could specify the output directory and whether you create subdirectories based off the files that we're going to use, then you can actually run it on server. But for this here, we're not that interested in doing that. So set that up. And if I go and add my, so here's all the list of grammars that are in the, the antler on GitHub. You know, there's like an antler package on GitHub and then if I load my transformations, so we had the transformations that we're using over on the, um, in that script, mm -hmm. I can just load that here. Let's see, smack rewrites antler. So that's what that script looks like. So it has a few methods that it defines and it has these other rules that get run. 
So that this this here is what's doing that script that we ran over here. Right, right. So now I can actually just you know pick one of these and do preview, and now you can see. And then I can you know see what rules affected the selection. And you can see what was changed. So like this here, you know, we changed from uh, mm -hmm. that to backslash slash. And like if I wanted to, I can go to the rule and you know change how that works. But <coughs> you can run the debugger in which it has the if I can share three screens now. <laughs> And then I can do the <coughs> step in the debugger. So that line's getting ready to insert, you know, less than and greater than around that div. Okay. And there you see that it's changed. Ah, yeah. Now it's going to delete any white space after the modifier, which didn't appear to do much. Oh. <coughs> That's kind of what I used, you know, to fix any of the antler stuff that was wrong. But mm -hmm. and you, like, let's say you were going to um, start from scratch with the Tomo parser that we just went through. Would you use this tool, or would is it just because there's one that you? Oh, you yeah. Since it's just one file, it's easy enough to do here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for me, it's pretty quick to you know set that up to, to run it onto this tool too, okay. and you know. I'd probably do it this way because I don't have to type in and remember this part. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I guess we were lucky enough that it was sort of a straightforward um, transformation that we didn't have yeah. to debugging. Or and, and most of the transformations here work. Let's just uh, if I do this here, uh, uh, select some directory here. Let's see, will this work? There we go. Uh, let's see how many of them don't work. I know there's some in here that's like where the Mac has put the dot files in there that <laughs> run all. So you can see some of them with the errors that you know that we get here. So Most mostly not though. More uh, yeah. majority seem to be fine. All right. And I can just kind of. Oh, you can see the problem with that one. It's one of the the Mac Mac files where it put the dot in there, so that's <laughs> really not a a problem. And this one here, if I preview that and essentially what ends up being is that the, um, the not I don't know how to you know basically smack doesn't have the ability for this type of not or else it, I, it would if I'd expand these out but it, it doesn't let me do not and another token okay I could do not and left brace you know right brace or left print, right print, left bracket, right bracket as a separate thing. But um, so that that would be possible in Smack. It's just that the way it's done here, it's, I can't, you know, it's harder to convert. So, okay. And I think that's what most of those errors are because I've kind of looked at those before running this over here. I think most of them are that there. And is that is that what I was tr trying to do with the, uh... Like the not new line thing that I mentioned before, is it a similar similar? So issue? the not new line one, let's see, that was, yeah, that, um, but it was not not from the Tommel, right? That wasn't in the Tommel. You just mentioned that, right? Well, I see the CNL, the right under the white space. There's NL. Okay, yeah. 
what I wanted to do was substitute everywhere where it's like not line feed, not line feed, not line feed. I wanted to substitute like not, you know, bracket ML bracket. So I wanted to define what a new line was once and then instead of repeating it everywhere. Yeah, so if you wanted to say not new line someplace else, so if you want to, let's see. You know, no, you, you know, yeah, you can't use the not NL down here. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah, their grammar did not have that. So it may be that I have not looked at the antler, you know, I've never used antler myself, but. Um, enough to know whether that not there is just one character if it's always one character um i could probably come up with something in smack but would automatically convert those so you know you wouldn't have to convert them no. if it's if it's like you know not and you know some token like end or something like that then yeah um i don't have that ability Gotcha. So there's like right where your mouse cursor is there's nothing i can put before the bracket esc like a to invert it. Uh, no, no. Yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Wow. This was this was very helpful. I, I really appreciate it. I, I think this will be um, illustrative and uh, relieve a lot of the questions on the middle <laughs> <laughs> on the Discord rather. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm out of questions. Unless there's unless there's anything you think we're missing. Uh, I think that's yeah you know, a good start. There's you know I'm sure that. You'll have other questions <laughs> as you work along, but because um, that always happens. But yeah, I think that's probably, you know, for a lot of these, that's what I have to go through. Um, one of the things you do might have to be careful on some of this is that some of these grammars are um, highly ambiguous. And the way Antler works, it picks, you know, it kind of goes and picks the first version of the rule that matches. And the way the smack works, it picks all of them that matches. Okay. So, you know, anything that's highly ambiguous may, you know, blow up <laughs> the number of possibilities. So on some of the larger grammars, that might might be an issue, you know. Okay. And a lot of times you can rewrite those grammars to eliminate a lot of the ambiguity, but you know, sometimes you just can't or it's basically too hard to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, I'll definitely, uh, I'm going to go through this and, and try and recreate some of the, uh, recreate the Tomo parser as a start and see how it goes. Okay. Sounds good.